Hi, everyone. Tummy Thinny Ake Tano here, the Internet's busiest music nerd, uh, here to talk about something that not gives me a tummy ache, but a headache, the music industry. Not too long ago, we had the boy, the goat, the electronic music producer slash singer songwriter himself, James Blake, going on a long ass Twitter tirade talking about how preposterous it is that in today's day and age, musicians don't really make a living off of their music, meaning that rather Rather than being properly compensated for uh, the art they are creating, they are instead having to cobble together uh, financially a living, as it were, through a bunch of other things orbiting around the music, uh, be that performing, be that syncs, be that endorsement deals, ads, so on and so forth. And James rightly so made the point that uh, this does not, in fact, have to be the case. And then not too long after he came through announcing uh, that he might have a solution to this whole problem. And in enters the solution of Vault FM, which I guess is kind of an exclusive musician subscription service where fans can log on and get access to uh, unreleased or yet to be released material, upcoming songs, B-sides, demos, what have you. Not to be dismissive, but isn't this just like Patreon for music? Haven't a bunch of musicians already gone on to Patreon to do something similar to this and, uh, you know, have seen kind of a range of success in the process. I guess what I'm saying is that this model has already proven to not so much be a silver bullet for this problem. Shirt change. It's also worth mentioning that Bandcamp has a particular feature like this as a part of its business model. So it's kind of worth asking whether or not Vault FM is just cutting down an already very small slice of pie that is currently existing in the the music industry at the indie level, unless it actually manages to expand the market of people interested in this sort of thing. That's all it's going to be doing. And sure, while it is true that artists uh, making a profile on Vault FM and getting some of their fans to uh, pay them for access to whatever they're getting over there, that would be an example of artists directly making money off of their music. By that same token, this doesn't really address the specter that is looming over the entire music industry. And that is the continued devaluation of music itself through streaming platforms and uh, current day label practices. Plus, while this type of model is sure to attract some attention and some subscriptions, it's not really a great means of connecting with and appealing to a general audience of fans, which I think you need to do at least a little bit on some level in order to uh, maintain a sizable crowd of people engaging with your stuff. Taking a bunch of your music and only allowing for limited access to it in this way is only going to grab the attention of your most hardcore of fans, which is fine, is cool. There's nothing wrong with that inherently. I'm on Patreon myself. But going about things in this way avoids a very necessary fight that needs to happen between the labels, the streaming platforms, and the artists who are very much being ripped off every day. Plus, on top of it, I have a sneaking suspicion that on the internet, into the immediate future, uh, things like very obscure and niche content it's not going to do very well. The algorithms are very much heading in that direction, whether it's TikTok, whether it's YouTube, whether it's wherever. Even I myself am seeing the same pattern in my own content output. As week to week, I cover a range of different artists who vary quite a bit in popularity. And it used to be years ago at one time that uh, I could do a big endorsement of an obscure record, a super underground record, and that would draw quite a bit of attention and views to that artist and to that album, even if they didn't have the biggest fan base on the planet. And look, I'm not making a general complaint here about how many views and how much attention I'm getting month to month, because the way the algorithm has shifted, it's more or less kind of evened out. And I am pretty much in the same place in terms of exposure and in terms of attention. I'm not making a woe is me argument. What I'm observing here is that the smaller artists, the more indie artists, the artists who just have a smaller crowd in general, anything that I say about their work tends to get less views than it ever has. While all the artists who I talk about that have way more mainstream followings, more top 40 followings, uh, their work is due to get more views than it ever has before. 
And I think this is all very much to the social media platforms and uh, the record labels via streaming platforms have realized their market share, their influence and their power. And they no longer need to take risks to innovate, to take a chance on something that has a big chance of flopping or present anything to audiences that may actually like uh, challenge the traditional media establishment because they've now replaced it. So now all they're focused on is maintaining their top spot and making as much money as they possibly can while they're there. That's how we've essentially reached the point where uh, we have the top YouTuber being Mr. Beast, who I think is cool and I like. I think the content he puts out is interesting, but uh, we've essentially come full circle in a way where we're just making television on YouTube. Do I need to go into why that's kind of spitting in the face of YouTube's original MO? The point is, ultimately, this is all a race to the bottom across the board for all types of content. And specifically in regards to the music world, the premise of this is all based on a lie that music overall is worth less. We can't pay as much for it because uh, there's just more music, more albums, more songs, more musicians than ever, which for sure this is true. But uh, this position kind of ignores the fact that music fans are having very specific experiences with the specific music of specific artists day in and day out. So let's put the actual solution to this problem bluntly. I think the only way we are ever going to see a change in this current downward spiral vis-a-vis -vis musicians making a living in the music industry, it's only going to happen through organized collective action point blank period, which I know sounds weird and sounds scary because a unionization has not been a large scale thing in the music industry for generations at this point, at least not in America anyway. But the good news is that doing this would not be impossible and that the positive results that could come out of this are real and very much possible. For example, the top artists who account for billions and billions and billions of streams every year, it's only a thousand different solo artists and acts. That's it. And a thousand solo artists and music acts, that's not a lot of people. If that many people bought tickets to a national anime expo, it would be considered a flop. It wouldn't, or hypothetically, it shouldn't take that much to even get half of those people collectivized if they could somehow all pull their music from Spotify at the same time. It's, uh... Something to think about. Look, at the end of the day, I'm not saying you have to listen to me. I'm not telling you I uh, have all the answers and that I'm Mr. Genius over here. And for sure, it's going to be easy for a lot of people to see this video and react negatively in the comments and be like, oh, what do you know? And then throw some kind of perceived hypocrisy onto me and just kind of make it seem like any point that I'm making is invalid because, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm reviewing albums on mainstream labels or something, which like, sure, but that doesn't mean that I don't want artists to get paid. I don't want artists to get paid. All I'm saying is that big time change is possible in these industries, and I don't necessarily see alternative market options here as being like a fix for it. Because while here and there, some musicians may be trying to like herd a few of their fans over into some exclusive subscription-based thing, we simultaneously have Spotify and streaming over here metastasizing, bringing labels record profits every year, uh, while musicians across the board, except for maybe those who get sweetheart deals and get stream farmed, uh, they're making less and less and less and less. But there you go. Uh, let me know what you think about any of this in the comments. Love you guys. You're the best. Anthony Fantano over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Collectivization, unionization, shout out to the UMAW forever.